Hello everyone and welcome back to our video series on animation for game engines. In the previous video we looked at adding our reference footage to an image plane to be able to animate from. Now we're going to start bringing in our door asset and start adding animation or keyframes to this asset. Okay, so we're back and I'm now going to just drag and drop my Blender file into my scene. Click append and then I'm going to browse to the collection. First one will do. And there you can see my door rig has now been brought in. <clears throat> I zoom in and there's our door rig. And now we don't need the axes turned on so we can go into, we can start turning some things off just to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to turn off that and that camera and that's circle there <clears throat> and yep that's it okay so we've got everything where we need it now just to kind of walk, walk you through the rig if i come around this side so we've got a few controls on here to get animating in blender we need to go to a thing called pose mode um, if you don't have the controls selected, pose mode will still be available. Um, but if I go back to object mode, if I there's a shortcut for this. <clears throat> it's control tab on the keyboard, and it jumps to pose mode. But you may need to make sure you've either selected the curves at some point or over so it can tell that there are joints to pose. <clears throat> now to go through the rig itself um, inside here there are bones but the way that blender works with control curves and this will be very confusing to anyone who's come from Maya um, <clears throat> is you the way the way that you can make control curves in blender is rather than having a <clears throat> a nerve circle that is basically being constraining the joint um, the way that you do it in Blender is that the joint is displayed as the control curve. It's not a constraint, it's a, it's a display. Um, it's very confusing to get your head around the first couple of times. It's took, taken me about a week just to get comfortable with the concept. Um, but yeah, that's how they do it. Um, so anyway, we've in, in the rig here, you've got um, a control to the left of the door, which is red. This is, if I just hit E on the keyboard to go to my rotate mode, this is the control for the, the opening and closing of the door. And then we've got a control on the right here for the handle. And you can see this control over here is moving on its own. Uh, when we, well, it's being driven by this it is a driven key. Um, if I just open the door a bit so you can see what's going on there, that is the mortise or tumbler of the door being driven by the handle. Nice little thing I put in there just to make it feel a little bit more realistic. Um, cool. So now just to kind of go through some of the interface with you um, for how to animate in Blender. Um, <clears throat> on the right hand side here, um, if you don't have this visible, um, you might have a little arrow over here, um, which, there we go, if I do that, you might have a little arrow over here. If you click this, it brings up this menu, if you just drag out a bit more there um, to make that a bit more visible. On the item, it's the item you have selected. So if I select this one, it's got rotate Y set to 0.22. I'm just going to hit it back to zero. Um, I don't know why I did it for that one. I didn't have that one selected. Um, that was odd. Yeah, so um, if I come back to that. And put some more on this. All right, let's do this one. There we go. And now this one. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so yeah, so that's um, the door controls. And now to get animating. So you've got a timeline at the bottom here. However, um, if you go up to the top, you've got this little plus icon. You can create an animation tab and it brings you a nice layout like this. So at the bottom you have a dope sheet rather than a timeline. And then you can put up the top here, your graph editor. 
Um, and there you go. It's almost ready to start animating. Um, let me just make things a little bit more organized so I can see a bit clearer. Okay, and now <clears throat> at the moment, even if I select my control curves, nothing appears in the graph editor, nothing appears on the dope sheet, and that's because we haven't set any keyframe information. Um, so let's uh, let's get throwing some keys in there. So what we'll do on our first frame is we'll come and find the initial pose. So on this first frame, the door is shut. My door won't select, that's weird. Oh, it is selecting, I'm just being a noob. Um, so it's the door selected there. And we could match it perfectly to our footage. So the door is kind of just a jar to start with. I'm just gonna start it closed a bit because um, I'm being lazy. So we just set a key on the rotate wide to start with. So you can right click on the channel and go insert keyframes. Um, <clears throat> and there you go, you can see everything turned yellow um, on the rotate channels. And then over here, you can see that the graph headers are populated with our control and the keys we've just created. Now, if I zoom out, at the moment we can't really see anything happening here. Let's see. And there you go, you can see there is a there is keyframe information there if you just drag around. <clears throat> it's a little bit difficult to see. Um, if you hit A on the keyboard whilst in this area, you can see it selects all the keys, makes it easy to see. Um, cool. So now we're gonna go along the timeline um, and just find out the door opening a bit more. So we go, okay, so it's about, it's just a bit of a jar here. So you can see that. So you can see it didn't create a key there when I moved this. We can either, <clears throat> if we look up here, you can see that this is now orange where the others are green. What that means is this channel has changed. These ones are still the same and all of them have keyframe information on. If we right, we can right click again and insert another key here, or we can push this record button down here. And if we just now move it, we can see it creates a key every time we make an update. So some people prefer to do it this way, some people prefer to do it this way. It's entirely up to you. Um, one of the things that also is really powerful in Blender is if I right click on here, I can, um, where is it? Uh, let's go to a different frame where there's no keyframe information. Right click. So, um, if you can see, sorry, if you hover over here, you can see I is linked to insert keyframe. Um, <clears throat> but we can also, if we go to preferences and then hotkeys, where is hotkeys? Uh, key map. And then we type in um, keyframe. So you can see at the moment, insert keyframe is set to I, delete keyframe is set to Alt I, okay, keyframes. You can start adding in your own shortcuts for this as well. Um, one of the things I played around with at one point was setting up my shortcut keys to be exactly the same as Maya here. Um, but yeah, it's up to you. I'm just for the time being today, gonna be working with just uh, recording my keyframes and going like that. <clears throat> okay. So now we have um, two keyframes of our door slowly opening. Now we're gonna go to a bit more along. So it's, so it's about there. And then we're gonna go to a bit more there. And now if we look at our graph editor, at the moment it's a bit confusing with all this information going on here. So let's, uh, guide you through how to navigate the graph editor. So if we hold control and middle, um, middle mouse click and drag, you, if you drag up, it zooms, uh, scales up the graph editor. And if you drag right, it zooms up. So I like to make everything framed so I can see as much detail in the curve as possible. So I'm just gonna scale that out a bit more there. 
and there we go. <clears throat> we can see our curves. Now, obviously, there is a ton of information in here which we do not want. Um, so you can see you've got all the translates and scales as well. We don't need this information. So we can turn them off individually, or my preferred one to do is to just turn them all off at once and then focus on just the rotate Y. <clears throat> now you have this blue line along the top here. It's a little bit, um, it can be a little bit distracting because it's so bright in comparison to the curve when it's not selected. If I select the curve, you can see the curve now quite clearly, but um, it can be quite annoying that it's there. You can turn that off if you want. Um, oh, there we go, show cursor. Gosh, that took ages. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can turn that on and off if that's annoying you like it is bugging me. <clears throat> so if we just hit play through now, you can see our door opening and closing kind of slows down a bit. And that's it. Now, what we're going to do here is now going to talk about, and this is where the bouncing ball principle applies to everything. And this is why we chose to work with a door today rather than the bouncing ball, because bouncing ball is everywhere. And well, this is an, a different way of looking at it. So <clears throat> depending on how this curve is shaped, this is where the principle of the pounds and ball kind of applies, is that we can control the shape of this to control the how the animation looks. Now, if I just grab this first curve here, and I'm gonna, where is my menu for, um, there is an option here. Um, I'm just gonna right click on it. Um, handle type, you can go to free, align, vector. <clears throat> if I go to free, this means I can move the sides of the handle individually, and it doesn't affect the other one, like this. And I'm now gonna go to this one. Why would it, what the, oh, there we go. Have to actually select the curve to get this menu up. So this menu here tells you how you can change the handle type. Um, you can turn, change the interpolation. Um, so let's just go through this quickly. Um, so if I, at the moment you can see it's set to Bezier um, or Bezier, however you want to say it. If I just select my curve and then just hit A on the keyboard, which selects all the keys or not, should select all the keys. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can change them to constant, which should, why has it gone for just that one? I want all the curves. Let's try deselecting. Deselect. Deselect. Right. A on the keyboard. So everything to constant. Why did that not work? <laughs> um, let's just try right click and interpolation type constant. There we go. Okay, for some reason, I think this one here just does the individual key. So we've got constant, which basically jumps from position to position. <clears throat> See here, it now jumps like some form of Lego animation. And then we go to linear. So everything's gonna be a straight line to each other, which is very robotic or constant. And then we have Bezier, which is the smooth version. Although this jumps back to my messed around version here. So now we have the principles down of adding keyframes. It's next on to looking at how to further fine tune this. In the next video, we'll be looking at how this applies to the principles of animation, along with some tips and tricks on how to create further realism and the sort of things we should be paying attention to for fine detail. If you'd like to see the rest of the series, make sure to subscribe to the Patreon where you can get exclusive access to the videos for anyone else, plus any assets for the project. A massive thank you to our subscribers. We'll see you on the next one. And thank you. Bye. Thank you.